Tonight's debate question is, are the Gospels historically reliable? Before we can get into this, we must first ask, uh, what is it we mean and define by the term historically reliable? Now, many events in ancient literature cannot be verified due to a lack of data. Moreover, the meta-narrative such as we find in the Gospels is beyond the reach of historians. The meta-narrative is that God has sent his uniquely divine son into the world to redeem it and has since returned to heaven from where someday in the future he's going to come to judge the world. Now, of course, that meta-narrative is incapable of being confirmed by historians. We simply don't have the tools to verify it. It doesn't mean it's false. It just means as historians, we can't verify it. So what do we mean when we ask if the Gospels are historically reliable? Well, to start, it means that the Gospels get things right. But there's more to it than that when speaking of ancient history writing, since the finest ancient historians, Greek, Roman, and Jewish alike, were committed to accurate reporting and to writing good literature for the reader's benefit. And that often meant reporting in a manner that was less concerned with precision than modern historians have. Think about it this way. How many of you are married? Uh, quite a few of you. Well, you know, of course, what I mean then when I say there's the guy version of the story and the girl version. Now, I'm overgeneralizing here, but for the most part, women like details and lots of them. They want to know what happened, where it happened, when it happened, why it happened, who was there, what they were saying, what they were wearing, what they were thinking, how they were feeling, and then they want to know how you feel about it. Now, guys are different. We like bullet points. Get to the bottom line. When we tell a story to someone who, you know, we're relating that particular story, um, we may abbreviate the story, we may adapt it some and change some of the details a little. We're not trying to corrupt or pervert the truth. On the contrary, knowing what that other person is looking for, we're trying to communicate the truth with more clarity. Now, let me give you a couple of, of more examples. The first book written by my late friend, Nabil Qureshi, was a New, T New York Times bestseller, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. It's an autobiography of Nabil's journey from Islam to Christianity. Bart may remember Nabil from a few years back when he was a student at uh, Duke. Here's what Nabil wrote in the introduction to his biography. By its very nature, a narrative biography must take certain liberties with the story it shares. Please do not expect camera-like accuracy. This is not the intent of this book. And to meet such a standard, it would have to be a 22-year-long video, most of which would bore even my mother to tears. The words I have in quotations are rough approximations. A few of the conversations represent multiple meetings condensed into one. In some instances, stories are displaced in the timeline to fit the topical character categorization. In other instances, people who were present in the conversation were left out of the narrative for the sake of clarity. All of these devices are normal for narrative biographies. Please read accordingly. Now that's biography written in modern times by a meticulous academic. Now let's go to antiquity. A man named Sallust commanded one of Caesar's legions and would become one of Rome's finest historians. Tacitus referred to Sallust as, quote, that most admirable Roman historian. The famous rhetorician Quintilian said Sallust was a greater historian than Livy and that, quote, one needs to be well advanced in one's studies in order to appreciate him properly. So it's noteworthy that Sallust occasionally displaced statements and speeches from their original context and transplanted them uh, in a different one in order to highlight the true intensity and even the true nature of those events. The finest ancient historians commonly used that technique called displacement and others. Now, in my view, that does not undermine the overall reliability of the literature, as long as we have the understanding that what we are reading was intended to communicate an accurate gist or an essentially faithful representation of what occurred. Ancient historical literature rarely ever intended to describe events with the precision of a legal transcript. In other words, it's often the guy version of the story with a lot more class.